Now, for this question, we're supposed to find the inverse of g, okay, for the first part. So, the first thing that we take notice is, of course, that gx itself is a quadratic equation. And, of course, we know that for quadratic equations, it's not one-to-one, -one, right? In this case, um, this graph, okay, looks a little like this. Right, it's actually our y equals x squared minus 1, so you shift down by 1. So it looks a little like this. However, because of the domain, is that x must be all positive real values. And therefore we know that, okay, the graph is only restricted to the right side of it. Okay, so this part, this is not part of the function. And therefore now it becomes 1 to 1, and that is why the inverse of g can exist. Alright, now, for those of you who have been with me long enough, okay, this is uh, what we actually talked about before when we were in O-level, isn't it? So now, um, in A-levels, this becomes something that, you know, you have done it before and it's actually not that difficult. Okay, so for the rest of you, well, you better know how to do this. Okay, you let y equals to x squared minus 1. All you have to do is to make x the subject. Now, there's only one little thing here that you have to be extremely careful with and that is you have to square root both sides. And whenever you square root both sides, you will have plus minus, isn't it? Okay, and now this is now the big problem. Okay, is your inverse, if it, is a g inverse going to be the negative of this root or the positive of this root? Okay, now some of you already know this, I hope, so you still, I hope you still remember. Okay, so in this case, what we do is we look at the domain of our g. Alright, and because we do know that this is a quadratic equation, okay, a quadratic equation is symmetrical uh, along the y-axis like this okay and what we want is the positive side of the curve and therefore what it means is that well our g is actually only this part the right side and the inverse of this right side will be the positive root okay now if our function were to be only valid for the left side and that means the domain is from 0 downwards, okay, negative infinity to 0. The inverse will be this part here, okay? And you ought to know that this is actually the positive root and this is actually the negative root, okay? So looking at our quadratic equation here, all right, we are taking the right side, okay, which is the positive root values for the domain the right side of the domain so in this case we will take the positive root and therefore our g inverse x will become the positive root of x plus one okay and of course we have to state the domain the domain for our g inverse will be the range of g and the range of g like i said earlier on we did a quick sketch isn't it and uh, it is actually something like this Okay, and the range of our g is actually from minus 1 to infinity and therefore, okay, the domain of our g inverse will be the range of our g and that will be from negative infinity, uh, sorry, negative 1 to infinity. And this is the range of our g. Okay, now on part 2, we're supposed to sketch on the same diagram the g and the g inverse. Okay, so in this case, uh, we have a small sketch here, but let us, uh, you know, have a bigger one. So, our g, okay, as I mentioned earlier on, our g will look a little like this, okay, negative 1, and you know that it will cut at 1. Okay, so this is our g. Alright, now the, our g inverse... Alright, our graph of G inverse will actually be the reflection along the line Y equals to X, okay, of G. So the point, this point, 0, negative 1, will then become negative 1, 0. So negative 1, 0 will be somewhere here, okay, and this point of 1, 0 will then become 0, 1, okay, and then of course it will be somewhere here. So the graph that we will have will look somewhat like this, okay, so this will be our G inverse. All right, and of course the res the relationship between our g and the g inverse will be, of course, they are reflection of each other along the line y equals to x. Okay, and so this is something that you ought to know. Okay, and you should know by now. Okay, let's move on to the next part. Explain briefly why the composite function g inverse f does not exist. Okay, and yada yada yada. So so let us uh, take a look at the first part first. Okay, um, why doesn't our g inverse f exist? Alright, part 3. 
okay so what we do know is well for our g inverse f to exist what must happen well the range of our f must be a subset or equal to the domain of our g inverse and of course the first thing that we want to find out will be what is the range of f okay so our fx is a long curve okay so is this long curve here it's not that difficult to imagine the range isn't it okay so this long curve is a very basic long curve okay you can go and sketch it out using your GC but do take note your GC seems to show that the long curve is stopped somewhere in the middle okay well it is actually not the long curve actually goes down forever okay so th the y-axis will become the vertical asymptote okay so do take note of that that is one of your uh, restriction of your GC okay so if you want to use the GC you better know what is going on there alright so it is not difficult to see that well the range is actually from negative infinity to positive infinity isn't it okay so therefore alright the range of our F will be from negative infinity to positive infinity okay the graph of F looks a little like this let me sketch it out properly alright this will be our F it cuts at 1 and this is our Fx equals to ln x okay so domain is all positive real values and therefore the range is all the way down and all the way up negative infinity to positive infinity now the domain of G inverse okay is actually our range of G okay and based on what we know about our G okay this is the G this is the G here same thing okay so our range of G is actually from negative 1 to infinity okay and just by looking at this okay you know that the range is this and the domain is that okay you know that the range of our f is not a subset neither is it equal to our domain of our g inverse okay and because for our g inverse f to exist this must happen and since this does not happen therefore our g inverse f doesn't exist okay anyway the question wants us to show that it doesn't exist and well it doesn't exist isn't it okay now let's take a look at the next part now it says that if the domain of f is restricted to subset a of r okay which is defined by a is a set of real numbers okay of which x must be greater than k okay don't be intimidated by you know this this kind of uh, writing okay it's actually something very simple what is it trying to tell you is that well the domain of f is this subset of a real number okay of course subset of a real number is still a real number isn't it and uh, this real number is such that x must be greater than k alright so what they want you to do is to find the least value of k for which the g inverse f inverse sorry the g inverse f can now exist alright so the whole idea here is to ask you to modify the domain of f so that the range of f will change and then the composite function of a g inverse f can exist okay now let us recap on why it doesn't exist at the first place okay now at the first place our g inverse f this composite function g inverse f doesn't exist because the range of f is too big okay so the range of f is from negative infinity to positive infinity and therefore it cannot be a subset of uh, the range the domain of your g inverse okay so this is the problem all right the range of f is the problem so what happens here is well we need to change the range of f and to change the range of f inevitably we will have to change the domain of f and that is what precisely the question is asking us for okay so let us take a look at how we present our answer and so on and so forth okay then this is what we do okay we say this for g inverse f to exist okay our range of f will have to be equal to negative 1 to infinity okay why because it has to be equal to domain of g inverse okay so at least must be equal or better still subset okay uh, we'll talk about why uh, you know it cannot be a subset because we want the least value of k okay the maximum domain actually all right so uh, so for our range of f to become negative one to infinity 
of course the domain of f will have to go okay we have to change somehow now the whole idea is this we have the range of f okay from negative infinity to positive infinity because of the domain that was given to us the domain says that well x is positive so from this x is equal to zero downwards okay that will give us the curve that goes down forever and goes up forever okay now what we want is for the range of f to start from negative one here okay this point here I'll, i don't want all the way to negative infinity i only want it up to negative one and all the way up okay so of course the whole idea is if the range will change then the domain will have to change so what you need to know is now at which value of x okay that means at this value of x downwards okay this will give us the range the red color range which is what we want from negative one to infinity all right so what we are really interested in is what value of x will give us the y value of negative 1 because I want my y value to be negative 1 all the way to infinity and there's no worry about going to infinity because you know as your x tend to infinity or y will go to infinity okay so the whole idea is now to let our fx okay which is our ln x be equal to negative 1 and from here we know that well x must be equal e to the power of negative 1 well which is 1 over e so now what we do know now is that well if the domain of f okay that means the domain of f the x value of f were to start from 1 over e to infinity okay now the range of f will then become negative 1 to infinity okay and since the domain of f must be you know x greater than k okay and therefore Okay, we can conclude that, well, k is equal to 1 over e, which is what the question wants us to find. Okay, this is the question. Find the least value of k. Okay, and k must be 1 over e, positive. Okay, now, because the question wants us to have the least value of k, so we must go all the way down, okay, as small as possible, the k value, the, or rather the x value, that will give us negative 1 okay we I mean of course you will know that well the range of f if the range of f were to start with zero instead of negative one it can be fitted into this uh, domain as well isn't it and the composite function will still exist okay but we won't want the range of f to be as anywhere smaller than this because we want the x value to be as low as possible okay or in other words the maximum domain that will give us a range and that can fit into this all right now the next part of the question asks us to define the composite function of um, g inverse f so it's actually not that difficult because we already have our g inverse and we do have our f f is actually our ln x okay something rather easy so well why not just quickly get it over and done with so negative sorry g inverse f x will be actually the square root of ln x plus 1 okay for which the x value will be from 1 over e to infinity so every time you define a function you have to give its domain so this is the last part of the answer